Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to go over the setup for Blaplica dubia roaches, otherwise known as the Guyana orange spotted cockroach. And these guys are basically the best alternative to f for feeding crickets to any of your herps. I really love them. They're easy to sex, they don't fly, and they don't climb. So, right now, I picked out a couple of the roaches so you can vary, see the variation of size. Right here is a female. And they're really easy to sex. The females are heavier bodied, have very small wings, and um, this one, she's pretty big. She might be pregnant. They also give birth to live babies around 30 to 40 at a time. The breeding rate's pretty fast, so when you're establishing a colony, it's, it's pretty easy. Let me get it to get off my finger here. Next, we have a couple of nymphs. This is a nymph. As you can see, it looks like a female. All the nymphs look like females until their final molt, and then you'll be able to tell if they're a male or a female. This is a large nymph, maybe one or two more molts until it turns into an adult. <laughs> As you can see, they can be kind of tricky. Here's a little bit smaller nymph right here. Now here's a male. This is a male. He has wings. Skinnier, not as heavy bodied. Very easy to determine if it's a male or female. You want to try and feed off the males before any females because the females give birth and you need them to, to sustain your colony. Now right here, that's a little fresh baby. He's about the size of a fingertip, as you can see, even smaller. Here's, there's another nymph, probably a couple molts in, maybe a few months old. Ooh, and I got a baby on me. As you can see, they're kind of quick. And that's it. These guys are virtually odorless, so you will not have to deal with any smells compared to the crickets. They're good breeders. The meat to shell ratio is actually pretty high, so when feeding off the herps, um, you actually get a, a good food source. They're pretty calm. Sometimes they can be uh, tricky to grab, but it's not that bad. The adults tend to live anywhere from a year and a half to two years old. They're a tropical species, so you usually don't have to worry about any infestation rate. Temperatures around 90 95 are ideal for good breeding. They don't bite. Feeding for the species is pretty easy. Uh, you just want to make sure you have a pretty high protein count because they will tend, they do tend to cannibalize their young and they'll eat the male's wings. So with having high protein, you can pretty much ensure that you will not have any cannibalization. Uh, what I do is first I use a little coffee grinder, usually about five bucks. You can find them at a lot of places. And I had some leftover turtle food, some fish flakes. I also added oatmeal and some leftover cricket diet that I had. As you can see, this is the final product. It's very fine, ground, ground it up. And I have a small bowl in the, in the cage, which we'll get to, get to later. And you'll see that they usually consume, consume it in about three days, and I, I have to replace it. Here's just some extra. That's all it is. Also use water crystals. Some people don't. You can just feed fruits and veggies, and we just can get the moisture from that. I choose to use water crystals. Um, I add actually some juice and water to these, and they tend to like it a lot. You can also feed leftover table scraps, 
Um, any fruits and veggies you may have lying around the house, apples, honeydew, cantaloupe, grapes, cherries, blueberries. These are all fine. Spinach, lettuce. Um, some people tend, like to use uh, lab rodent blocks, cat food or dog food. All this is fine. It's just, like I said, make sure you have high protein. And here's just my basic setup. Again, it's very basic. There's a lot of different ways to do this. This is what I did. I went to Walmart, grabbed the 50 gallon Rubbermaid bin, as you can see. And I cut out two holes in the top, covered by black screen mesh, also found at Walmart. I then went to my local pharmacy and I grabbed two of these um, electric heaters. They're 24 hour heaters used for backs and necks. But um, I grabbed two of these. You want to make sure you don't get the two hour automatic shut off ones because you want these on 24 7 to keep the bin warm. And from there, you put them on. And on the inside, as you can see, I just have a whole bunch of egg cartons, food in one dish in the middle, and that is all you need to get started. There's no substrate, and you can pretty much add your adult uh, dubia roaches and food and water, and you have a start of a colony in no time. One thing I'd like to mention is with any fruits and veggies that you add, make sure they're not growing mold as it can kill the, uh, the roaches. I need some good wedges. You can see they're on there. They don't like the light, so they'll try and hide. I do recommend getting a dark bin. Do not get a clear bin because they are, they do like to hide from the light. Also, when you're stacking your, your egg crates, you want to stack them vertically because the roaches do like to thermoregulate like reptiles. Um, they'll get, they'll find a comfortable warmth and uh, stay at that level for as long as they like. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy. And I hope you guys switch over to roaches because I know crickets are a pain and these guys are awesome.